everyone and welcome to my latest policy review of the For Britain 2020 manifesto. Uh, now when I say regularly that this is the best manifesto in the country, the issue I'm going to cover today is one of the reasons why and this is an area that is very close to my own heart and uh, that I care very very deeply about because it's the foundation, it's the foundation of society and it's the building blocks of the future. It is of course education and uh, I get it's one of those things like law and order where you think, you wonder is this, does every generation say the same thing? Do they all say that education standards are slipping? Uh, well regardless whether that's the case or not, it's my firm belief that education standards are drastically slipping, uh, that kids are not taught to think or how to think, but taught what to think. I think rather than uh, research into textbooks and literature, uh, kids are finding pretty much everything online. Uh, I know online has its uses, but it's not, uh, it'll never replace a fundamental uh, research and and and, and uh, experience uh, and I do worry let me give you an example uh, mathematics basic mathematics how good are kids now on their times tables do we do times tables anymore I'm going to sound like a real old fuddy-duddy with this uh, but the good thing about the times tables were it taught us to add subtract in our heads we didn't need calculators or computers uh, I must sound a hundred years old when I say that but it's true um, and we are, I believe, kids are not taught as well as we used to be. Uh, but even the things that we are being taught, that kids are being taught in school, are frankly dangerous. And I will link to something below, and yes, this doesn't come from, from teachers, but the ideological uh, uh, alliance between the likes of the BBC and the teaching profession uh, is quite stark. So the BBC on the day that of Brexit, and I'll link to it below, you may have seen it. <clears throat> I like to think nothing can surprise me anymore, but this actually shocked me. They were making uh, 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 a little cartoon, not a, not a cartoon, but a little sort of play, uh, play thing of, of uh, uh, a British queen <coughs> being told, excuse me, being told essentially that nothing was British. Uh, and that everything comes from somewhere else. Well, you know, if that's the case, if everything in this country comes from somewhere else, then everything in every other country must come from somewhere else as well. I mean, I think this this little sketch thing told us that tea was from India. Uh, but why does India get to claim tea, but Britain doesn't get to claim anything? Uh, you know, we, we all know the, the double standards going on here, but it is actually, uh, it, it's shocking. And as I say, that's not the teaching profession, it's the BBC. But the ideology is the same because the teaching profession in this country is dominated by not just people who lean to the left, but the extreme left. Uh, the teachers' associations, the uh, the National Union of Teachers, for example, extreme left organisation with Palestinian flags all over its uh, webs. You know, the, this, this kind of thing. You get the idea. <coughs> so what they are teaching children is not... Uh, certainly not any pride in themselves or in this country. They're ch teaching British children to hate themselves. And how, you know, I don't need to tell you, I shouldn't need to argue, nobody should need to argue, that being taught to hate your own identity is a really cruel and extremely negative, profoundly negative thing to do to a person, which is likely to have a huge impact on their self-image, self their, uh, their self-esteem, all of these things. Uh, and yet we are cruelly t teaching children to hate themselves. Uh, and, uh, and hate themselves is not a, a push or stretching it or being alarmist. That is exactly what's happening. So let me crack on with this then. Uh, as with the other ones, I'll, I'll simply read through the policy and, uh, and offer a little bit of commentary. It's a bit <coughs> longer. I think this might be the longest one in the, uh, in the manifesto. So bear with me. Um, I don't want these to be too long. So do bear with me and I'll try and keep the, the commentary to a minimum. So here we go. Education. Children are a society's future. I mean, this is common sense. What Britain's children learn today is the foundation of Britain tomorrow. Again, this is common sense. 
Uh, if t children were taught in school to love their country and to fight for their country, you would have a very different, it would have a very different future to the one that we have now. Uh, I, sadly, children now, as I, as I said uh, uh, quite emphatically, children are being taught to hate themselves. The impact that will have will mean there's no Britain. The Britain that we know, the traditional Britain, the Britain that is identifiable as Britain across the world. Uh, many of us love that Britain and want to protect it. It will, it, what, the, the remnants of it that are hanging on uh, will soon be gone. And you can see it in, in universities, etc., with uh, wanting to decolonize the library. And there are too many white people, too many white authors in this room. Uh, absolutely, absolutely shocking. Uh, actually, it's a racial hate crime, but, uh, you know, well, we all know about privilege. So, uh, For Britain believes that currently education in the UK is in a state of emergency. Again, that's not inflammatory language. I think we're actually quite... Uh, uh, being quite uh, toned down there, to be honest with you. Instead of being educated, being taught the skills needed to pursue a career and how to be responsible, self-sufficient, respectful and law-abiding adults, children are subject to enormous political and social propaganda. Well, being... Uh, responsible, self-sufficient, respectful, law-abiding adults isn't what the extreme left actually wants because that's an ordered society and a peaceful and quiet society and they want revolution. We all know that. This is this teaching is shaping British society and sending it in a dramatically different direction. Left-wing propaganda dominates teachers' unions and as such propaganda such as that surrounding Islam or trans transgenderism, those two are the chief two, uh, is taught as fact. So propaganda is taught as fact. For a society to succeed, its people must have respect for that society. Fairly self-explanatory. In schools, left-wing indoctrination into the ideas of multiculturalism and the demonisation of Britain are the norm. This means that British children growing up in uh, growing up with a negative view of British society and its freedoms, and indeed of Western liberal democracy itself. In 2016, the National Union of Teachers, Britain's largest teaching union, passed a motion at its annual conference announcing its refusal to teach British values to children, denouncing this as cultural supremacism. Instead, the union insisted upon promoting policies that welcome migrants and refugees into Britain. Um, there isn't a great deal I can add to that. I, uh, it, it's... It's an example of exactly what I've been talking about. They refuse, the NUT refuse to teach British values, uh, calling it a mark of cultural supremacism. Uh, incredible, incredible, extraordinary stuff. None of them should be in jobs, if you ask me. Uh, but that's another matter. Reading, write, writing, mathematics and learning skills are the building blocks to a working life. For Britain salutes the reintroduction of phonics to the classroom and we will make this the model for language and numeric literacy. We will emphasise focus on mental arithmetic skills and the learning times tables and will introduce children to other languages from year one of primary school when their minds are most open to these skills. Um, again, fairly self-explanatory. We want people to be educated in schools, to prepare them for the working world, uh, to prepare them for a career, to prepare them for adulthood, for, for responsibility. Uh, but uh, largely, with the emphasis on the working world, we need to get the educational basics right. I have spoken to employers uh, or uh, recruitment consultants, recruitment, and the, for example, one of the ways that I think we are we are dumbing down as as a country and a society, is uh, English. Now I know that English can be difficult, uh, and there are there are always going to be a couple of quirks in English that you you are confused by, um, but I I think the standard has has enormously dropped, and I've spoken to recruitment consultants who will tell me that people don't even have. Uh, basic, uh, a high level of basic English, uh, written English, uh, and this is uh, a, a stark difference to 20, 30 years ago. Uh, so we need to get the basics right, the educational basics right. This is the primary point of school. So let's get back to that. 
At the old system of grammar, secondary and modern, secondary modern and technical schools was designed and equipped to make a great education available to all, regardless of background, uh, giving mobility, particularly to children from poorer backgrounds. Uh, to meet the current demand for these types of schools, we must concentrate on opening a minimum of one grammar school per town and more where funds are available to ensure every child uh, can uh, has an uh, opportunity to, to benefit from this. Again, fairly self-explanatory, one grammar school per town or more if it can be afforded. In a bid to ensure that as many people as possible attend university, quota systems adopted by both Labour and the Conservatives have meant that students are graduating with pointless degrees and mountains of debt. Uh, when another career direction would have been more appropriate. So, for Britain will introduce a new national curriculum to be followed by all schools, state, public, private and religious, to outline minimum teaching requirements. Beyond the curriculum, schools will be free to make additions, provided they do not conflict with the curriculum, uh, and are free to decide upon teaching style. So the curriculum will include the following history. History should be taught to children as it happened, not with anti-Western political spin. Children will be taught the true horrors of totalitarian regimes, such as communism and Nazism. Uh, they will also be taught the positive contributions that Great Britain has made to the world, as well as its industrial and political history. Now, this is really important. And I said at the outset that, de you know, de denigrating people's country uh, can be, have a huge effect on them as people. It's an attack on their identity and the way they see themselves. Uh, and therefore, uh, it can be quite damaging, particularly against children. So the, we're going to do the opposite of that. Instead of instilling negative feelings into children, we're going to instill positive ones, uh, make them like themselves, not hate themselves, but by telling the truth. And the truth is that this country has made an, an immeasurable contribution to the world that should be celebrated. Politics. Children will learn how British politics works. They will learn the machinations of Parliament, the party system, local councils and the impact of the media. Schools will defend the democratic process as superior to totalitarian regimes and pupils will learn the value of freedom of speech, open debate and individual liberty. Uh, so at the moment, communism and hard leftism is promoted in schools. We will promote freedom instead. Sciences. Children will be taught factual and unbiased science. They will learn and practice scientific inquiry and open debate, as well as the principles of science. For example, that true science attempts to disprove its own findings. All aspects of science, fact and opinion will be explored and this will be carried out without political bias. Again, uh, there will be a, a actual science and actual scientific testing and actual... Uh, the truth of scientific experiments will be discussed and we will not bury inconvenient truths. Uh, that goes for a lot of areas of life. Mathematics, as well as being taught complex mathematics, simple mathematics, which is crucial, will also be taught. Children will learn how to add, subtract, multiply, do fractions and do so without use of computers or calculators. <coughs> Languages. I wish I spoke more than one language. I have fairly high level of French, uh, but I wouldn't be confident enough to say I spoke French. Uh, but I think it would, it's an absolute, uh, it, it's a huge asset for people to be able to speak more than one language. Uh, and so I think, and as the manifesto goes on, children will be introduced to languages at an early age. Uh, European languages, as well as those from further afield, will be included. Schools will decide upon which languages to teach in light of available resources. <coughs> My apologies. English. Children will learn the richness and beauty of the English language. They will read Shakespeare, the Bronte sisters uh, and other great British authors such as Dickens or more recently George Orwell. They will learn the English language and how to write and speak correctly. All schools will teach lessons in English only, the only exceptions being Welsh or Gaelic. 
practical living. Children must be taught the practicalities of life. I've long, long uh, thought this. They will be taught cookery, healthy eating, household budgeting, banking, uh, mortgages, etc., finances, taxes, and obedience to the law. We should be learning these things. It's a minefield. Uh, and when you go out on your own into the adult world, uh, these things, uh, you, will, you will need to deal with these things and you will need to know how to handle your money, how to eat well. Uh, and I think we should be teaching these things in school. Non-academic subjects. Academia is not the only route for children to take and non-academic teaching must be given high priority. Not all children will be suited to academia nor desire academia. Therefore, skills such as car maintenance, plumbing and other non-academic options must be on offer to those for aptitude or well, with aptitude for them. Uh, fairly self-explanatory. Uh, academia isn't everything. Uh, again, I, I can't. You know, we shouldn't even need to say this. Sex and sexuality, controversial one. Children over the age of twelve can be taught about sexual reproduction, and its consequences in terms of disease and unwanted pregnancy. Religious schools, and here's where there is a bit of a clash. It's between the sort of the uh, secular norms and secular morals of society clashing with what people teach in religious schools. Um, and I don't really see why this is such a big clash. I think it's fairly easy uh, to accommodate both. And it, uh, the manifesto goes on to say religious schools will be free to teach sexual morals in accordance with their own tradition. But they must also teach that homosexuality or sex outside of marriage are legal and that homosexuals and transsexuals, for that matter, enjoy equal rights under the law. This does not interfere with their religious right to condemn homosexuality, for example, as sinful, but it does require children to be taught about the society they live in and that their religious tradition does not necessarily match the law of the land in a secular nation. Teaching on abstinence as well as contraception can be included in the list of options for human sexuality, allowing children to better understand sexual morals and adult responsibility in this regard and this particularly is a big issue for me and a very important issue for me i find the sexualization of children over the last decade or so to be really quite disturbing uh, i think that we need to push sex and sexuality back into an adult direction it's certainly where i would like, like to see it going so uh universities like schools, universities in Britain are carrying the heavy weight of political correctness and left-wing bias. As an example, many universities disallow open debate and bar non-left-wing speakers from holding events. And I can tell you that from lots and lots and lots of personal experience of being protested against at universities are... Uh, so many times cancelled from speaking at universities um, and I was to speak, I think it was the University of West London a few years ago. Quite ironically, I was going to speak about censorship by universities and they wouldn't let me speak about it. Uh, I'm sure they, I'm sure that it's not lost on them. I'm sure the, the irony of it can't be lost on them. Uh, so, for example, those critical of immigration, Islam, censorship or transgenderism are routinely no platformed in British universities. Teaching is very often left wing as well as one sidedly anti British, anti American, anti capitalist and anti Israel. So on that, for Britain will legally oblige universities to hire teachers of all political backgrounds. We will ensure genuine diversity of thought within British teaching institutions. Uh, institute a university bias board to which students may complain if if uh, an event of their choosing or speakers they have invited are disallowed for political reasons. So we need a body that, for example, uh, you know, people who've invited me to speak, students who've invited me to speak, um, have gone on to have their 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 academic careers destroyed, uh, and they need protection. Um, they're certainly not, don't have anywhere to turn. So when they hire a, a, a venue at the university and they, for example, invite myself to speak and then uh, all hell breaks loose. Um, I, I, honestly, I, I could really take offence at the, the hoo-ha when my name is mentioned. Uh, but, there's, you know, if a student has their event cancelled by some 
busybody at the university they have nowhere to turn there should be somewhere to turn and something to prevent their academic careers being destroyed simply because they invited a speaker to speak in this apparent free country expel students who threaten to disrupt events with intimidation or violence based solely on the presence of a particular speaker and bring char criminal charges if appropriate if found guilty of such intimidation by the university bias board uh, so once again this uh, uh, this board should have some teeth and it should be able to expel people so for example if one if the free speech society for example invites me to speak and the uh, Antifa society decides to put around threats saying they're going to disrupt the event and, and uh, etc. They should be expelled. Uh, you cannot bully your way around university like that. Uh, finally, end university quotas. Fairly self-explanatory. Further points on this. For Britain will scrutinise the National Union of Teachers and place obligations upon them to teach the national curriculum as required. Those who refuse will be fired. What puzzles me is how the NUT can pass a motion saying we're not going to... Uh, uh, we're not going to teach British values, and just and just be allowed to do it. You know, this is it. it always it, it always baffles me. We get all this talk, don't we? Uh, you, and you hear it a lot from the Tories lately. They're going to do this and they're going to do that, and and, and nothing actually happens. Uh, absolutely extraordinary. You can how we can stand back and watch people refuse to do their jobs and just do nothing. We need to do something, and that goes for a lot of areas of life. End the funding of transgender advocacy groups and hold a public inquiry into their teaching in schools. I've spoken about this several times. Uh, transgender groups with absolutely no scientific basis, what they're teaching has no basis in science. They have made it up. They are plucking things out of thin air. They are creating a new uh, range of genders, creating them and uh, teaching them to kids. They're telling children there are 70-something genders, pick one. They are being funded by you, by the taxpayer. The government is paying these really, really radical groups to go in and teach your kid that they, can, they don't have to live in their own body if they don't want to. And if they have any self-image problems, it's because they're living in the wrong body. This is scandalous and should not be happening we would bring that to an end and very very much so big priority aim to build one grammar school in every town in the uk oblige local government to prioritize the provision of decent schools in their area because in all honesty uh, i think governments local national whatever it may be should have somehow fixed priorities they should be forced to prioritise the basic things that we need to survive. One of those is education and it must be a priority. And that national government or central government doesn't oblige local government to prioritise certain things, I think is actually a, a, a failure of duty of the national government. Uh, I, I really do. I think there needs to be a lot more um, instruction to local government on what to prioritise and how to spend the taxpayer's money. End the pointless degree culture by providing funding for the study of STEM, science, technology, etc. Uh, subjects with the aim of ending tuition fees altogether. Um, yeah, again, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, Funding for quote unquote real degree, science, technology, medicine, mathematics, etc., etc., um, should be uh, funded uh, and with the aim of ending tuition fees altogether. I do think there is something wrong when people are starting their career already chained to enormous, enormous debts. This is not the way young people ought to be starting out in life. Um, there's, there's enough debt in life, you know, debt is going to come. Uh, and actually, I'm, I, I'm going to, I'm, I, I'm reading a really interesting book, which I'm going to review, um, The Grip of Death, about uh, the, uh, the levels, chronic levels of debt 
that uh, Western society people, vast numbers of people in Western society are living with, as if as if that's the norm, as if it's ordinary to, to spend your life uh, up to your ears in crippling debt. I don't think it should be. And I don't think that people should start life, uh, start out their careers, young people should start their careers uh, already, already with enormous debts hanging over them. Um, not the best start in life. So that's education. And again, like so many of our policies, I really do believe that these are, this is what the country is crying out for. Um, we want the we want to get the basics right. We want people to come out of school, being able to read, write, think, add, subtract, um, you know, do things without a computer or a calculator uh, and actually think for themselves and, and go make this country, you know, keep the standard of this country high. To do that, we need a decent education system. I don't believe that's what we have at the moment. I do believe that these policies, that For Britain's policies, are the answer to the problems of the educational system. Uh, if you believe that, join us, get on board, stand for election, uh, get behind these policies. They are the right policies, they will work. All we need to do is get them to the public uh, and offer them, offer them to the public for them to vote for and vote for them they will so i'll be back next week with foreign affairs another very crucial uh, area of policy uh i am out and about i'm in scotland uh, tomorrow so i look forward to seeing people there and uh i shall uh, be back with with several more videos uh, next next week a lot more settled in now and I'm looking forward to, um, well, I'm looking forward to all the challenges between now and May. But with policies like these, we have everything, everything to fight for and everything to work for. Uh, get on board. It is by far the best manifesto in the country. Forbritain.uk slash join or text uh, join to 60777. Do that and I shall see you on the campaign trail soon. Thank you.